Hello and welcome back to another episode of DCS in 10 minutes or less. This is episode 4, which will be a two-part episode going over landing. Part 1, we'll go over how to use approach mode, using approach mode as the ILS. Part 2, we'll go over how to enter your own navigation point to use ILS, and finally, using ILS in pretty bad conditions. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. Alright, this portion of the video, we're going to go over regular approach mode. And what I mean by that, so when you click approach, you're going to get Hudson Balji. Normally, if the runway had navigation assistance or guidance to get you into the airfield, uh, you would have different symbology. But here, we don't have any, so I'll have it set up that we won't get any. So, say you're playing a map and the airfield you're landing at doesn't have any uh, navigation assistance, or if you're playing multiplayer and the mission maker forgot to put down the proper waypoint for uh, landing, your, your plane doesn't have the landing information it needs, you can use regular approach mode and just land just fine. So, let's go over some symbology real quick. Right, let me try to pause perfectly on time. Perfect. All right, so fly path marker you're going to put at the end of the runway where you're going to land. The acceleration chevrons right here, you're going to put down these brackets. Uh, so when you have these in the brackets, you're going to have the best approach speed possible. And then the poppy lights over here. So we're not going to talk about these. My dad did a pretty good video on it. I linked it in the description if you want to watch it. So pretty much two white and two red means I'm on uh, perfect glide slope. All right, some other things to talk about, uh, the landing gear. So if you're above 260 knots and you put the landing gear down, it's going to yell at you. So if you put it down below 260, you're going to be fine. I'm going to wait till 200 knots, so I don't have to worry about it. Also, I'm going to put the landing gear lights into land, which is already set up. I contacted Nels already, so that's why the poppy lights are up. Um, I'm going to use the trim method. I normally don't use the trim method, so my landing is shitty. It's okay. The only reason I'm going to do it so you guys see how to reset your fly by wire and trim after you land. And also, we're going to use the AOA uh, indicator right here. So, these brackets, I guess you would say, is where you're going to put your AOA. So, that's going to get you 14 AOA. All right, so enough talking. Let's get into it. I have to pause this on. All right, so. So I some chevrons into the brackets. Not gonna look at the poppy lights because we're good. Mm, almost 200. I guess we can put it down now. We're also gonna raise our seat up. 14 AOA is a pretty high nose angle, so we need to see over the nose. Gears down. All right, we're gonna trim until I get 14 AOA. Again, this is not my preferred method. And then I'm going to fast forward until we're about at approach. Alright, so now we have our radar countdown, so we're 130 feet, 120 feet. There's also a little bit of a uh, crosswind. Alright, a little bit of a flare. Adjusting rudder. Printing throttle. Alright, so from the landing video, the inverted T, same thing, we're going to keep it below the horizon line. That way we don't have a tail strike. Alright, so normally, <laughs> normally uh, you have a pretty long runway, but for example, let's say we don't have a long runway. We have a drag chute right here. So what you're going to do, you're going to click on it, it's going to pull back, and the drag chute is going to deploy. Uh, when you slow down, just click it again, it's going to go forward, and that's what leaks in the hook. Uh, just note, if you have a decent crosswind, and you have your drag chute out, it's going to it's gonna yank you around. Alright, so, drag chute. Deployed. Slow down a little bit. Nose was steering on. All right. Drag shoot release. All right. So then you landed, but your plane is trimmed out, right? So what you're gonna do? Come right here below the charges for uh, air to air and air to ground, where it says rearm. You're gonna click that. And we can get the box. All right. Then you see the flight surfaces right below it moving. That means you just reset your uh, trim. So you're good to go there. All right, we'll see you on the next portion of the video.
This portion is going to be using an approach mode with runway navigation assistance. So let's go look at our radio navigation panel real quick. We're going to go into this in a later video, so we're not going to do a deep dive now. All right, so we got TACAN right here. We got VOR and we got our ILS. So let's see what we can get from Nellis Airfield. So Nellis has a TACAN. It does not have a VOR, but runway 21 has an ILS of 109.10. So again, 12 X-ray, 109.10. All right, so we're going to pause. Make sure we're not flying. Okay, active pause. So 109.10, 12 X-ray. We're going to go over the dials real quick because people ask me. So the top portion of the dial says use your mouse wheel to adjust. And then the bottom portion says do left or right clicks. That works for all these uh, dials right here. All right, so now we entered our radio navigation. Let's look at our main attitude uh, indicator right here. All right, so now we got this bottom bottom deviation uh, line this is going to be your course deviation so it's pretty much going to keep you in left or right limits so if you look right now I have this off center and it's indicating that as well and then up top we have our glide slope deviation needles so pretty much uh, your glide slope approach your attitude altitude sorry uh, to the runway all right so now let's enter approach all right so now we have different symbology so let's pause track IR right now perfect so as before Acceleration on chevrons and the brackets are still there. Pause track IR. All right, so now we have our course index line, pretty much going to line us directly in the middle of the runway. Uh, so for some reason, say DCS has a bug and you don't have this line because you know it's DCS. Up here, you have this tick mark on the horizon line, same exact thing. And then right here, you got this box. Put your flight path marker in the box, and it's going to guide you uh, to the perfect glide slope to the runway. And then let's see if I can move track IR. Uh, you won't be able to see it really. All right, so right here we have a uh, rectangle that's indicating a synthetic runway. So say you have a really bad, shitty w uh, weather condition, so like you can't even see the runway, uh, but now you have a synthetic runway, so you actually have better situational awareness in poor conditions. Uh, let's see if I go on pause. There we go. Pause track IR. All right, so the key bind I used for, for that was it's going to be the INS update. All right, so Magic Slave AG Designate INS Position Update. That's the keybind I use. So say if for some reason you don't like the synthetic runway, you have this symbology and pretty much just keep your flight path marker lined up with this. I don't like that, so I'm just going to switch back. All right, so now we're going to line up. I'm going to pause track IR. Let's contact Nellis real quick. Infield 1-1, one, one, inbound. All right, so cool thing with the Mirage, we're going to put Autopilot on. And then we're going to use approach hold. All right, now the Mirage is going to fly itself to the runaway. I'm going to raise my seat. All right, so if you're using approach hold or approach mode, all you have to do is control the throttles, so keep the chevrons inside the bracket. That's all you have to do. All right, we're going to slow down. I'm going to wait till 200 to put my landing gear down. So you see it's flying inside the, uh, the square. It's just slowly lining up. Same as here. All right, I'm going to fast forward. I'll uh, resume the video when we get closer. All right, so from here, I'm going to take control of some and disconnect autopilot. The plane will land itself, but it won't be as graceful. So autopilot's off. Just lining up for a flare. Again, a little bit of crosswind, so I'm adjusting. Perfect. Also, what's cool about the Mirage? I mean, every plane does it. It's called aero braking. But because the Mirage has a huge wing surface, you have a giant air brake. All right, wheels down, parachute, yada, yada, yada. All right, so that was that portion, of the, or this whole video, actually. So next video is going to go over how to set up your own uh, INS information, and we're going to execute it. See you then.